Okay, so showing how I like do the the weird style I do. So what you you basically what you're gonna do is you're gonna take an image, whatever it may be, and then just put that like on your software, whatever you use. I use GIMP, so that that's that's what I use. And so you put it there, and then you add a layer on top of it, and then you just draw from that layer, so you don't like mess it up. So I'm gonna like do it two ways. I'm gonna do like the more abstract and like the more detailed like for half so I'll do like the the less detailed on the left and like the more on the right I guess you could say so for this one uh, you just take take the color you feel represents the majority of an area like right here I'd say like Ah. Yeah, this. I feel this covers this area the most. I feel that fits there. And then, like, just other color colors in general as well. Just take blobs and mesh them together until you get the result you want but yeah, you gotta... yeah. He is already looking goofy. This is a little bit of an easier image since it's smaller. It's a little bit more difficult because, like, it. It's like a worse quality image, and then there's like so many like artifacts that make it look weird. Yeah. This is hard. Like, my freaking instincts are like, oh, there's a bunch of different shades, so you gotta, like, make everything a completely different shade. But I'm also trying to be simplistic.
So here's kind of like a more abstract, kind of like a tinted glass, I guess. You can, you're not tinted, like a stained glass. Kind of like freaking church painting, you'd see. Like glass, I don't know what it's called. Yeah, just like comparison. Here's this, what old deco for? You can see, like it's, you can see it, but it's like weird and abstract. Now, I'm going to do a little bit of more detail on this side, which, uh, you know, I'll just start from the top and do again. So, for this method, it's a lot more time consuming and quite frankly, just brain numbing. So what you do is you just, take these dots and you just make a bunch of tiny dots like as there's like a bunch of difference in shading you just keep making these dots it's kind of same uh, process as before like grab the shade which represents in your eyes the target the most like for this I kind of like like this area right here. I think that suits it. Like for this one, I do this. No, you gotta look at the very differences in colors and see which one you think looks better. Because like right here, it's just like a whole lot more shaded now. Yeah, I'll keep on doing this. And also, if you do see some spots where you could just color it one color, like right here, you can do that. Because like if there's just like a not enough to differenti differentiate like colors, it doesn't matter. You can just make it all one color like this. And it still kind of works out. Yeah, but when it gets to muddy stuff like this, this is when you want to really put in the work. Although, don't be afraid to try to put more detail in or less detail in. Just do it however. I'm just showing how I do it. So there's the mouth. As you can see, there's like a big, big difference already. Yeah. Again, when it comes to like big areas like this, you can leave it big. Since there's not like too huge of a difference. it like that but if you just a nitpick and like you want to keep the size of the dots consistent either way it works
And if you're ever having trouble, like, figuring out what you have done, uh, just, like, make your, like, image, like, invisible for a second, just to let you keep track. It also lets you know if, like, there's spaces you missed, but, you know, I just keep the image behind it, just to, like, I don't know, be convenient. Just so it can cover up the gaps, and then it still blends in. Sometimes it's a little hard to tell, like, what's going on. It's like, sometimes it just blends so well, but I kind of, like, move my head a little bit so the lighting of my PC looks weird. That it becomes easy to differentiate between the drawing and the uh, picture. Depending on the size of the image, doing this could easily take a couple hours. Like my boy Walter. By the way, let me let me just go to Walter real quick. So here's like the Walter original. It's I'm I'm really happy with how it turned out. Yeah, this is where it gets a little messy, so I have to keep constantly switching on and off just so I can tell what's a drawing and what's part of the actual image.
I would say for the eyes, you might want to make it less like blobby so you can differentiate differentiate it. Frick, I am so bad with that word. Uh, differentiate it with the rest of the drawing like this. Like make it a bigger blob so it's easier to tell out from the rest. But that is just a suggestion. You don't have to. I like these, like dead pixel square since it's like a low quality image it gives you a lot of space to breathe it gives you breathing space yep okay so here is the final result so on the left we have the like more abstract kind of blobby less detailed style and on the right it's like kind of like a yeah it, it kind of looks more like a stained glass painting you'd see at a church in my opinion yeah so here it is uh switching the image as you can tell the, le the right side looks a lot better than the left, but you know, different style, like, you know, you know how it is. More abstract, looks a bit weird, but yeah, this is how you draw like this. Now, I don't suggest you do this freehand, because I have no idea how anybody would ever do that. You could try it, but I would not do that because that's too complicated for my small caveman brain. Okay, that is that. 